A viewer asked how we make sourdough bread. Well, I'm fixing to show you, coming up next. Okay, now, to make sourdough, you have to have sourdough starter. Um, I'll tell you about how you make sourdough starter and how you feed this. Um, you know, this is a gallon jar. And the way you start it is a cup of water, a cup of flour, and a half a cup of sugar. You can <clears throat> add a little yeast to that, um, but you're gonna have to feed it more often. Typically, you feed it every day. If you add yeast to it, it makes it uh, start getting active sooner. So you may have to add, you may have to feed it like every 12 hours. But anyway, Tommy, can, you, can they see this good? Do you see how bubbly and foamy that is? Can you turn it up a little bit? Like that? Yeah. That's it. This is active. It's working. That's what you want to see. Now I'm going to stir this down some. Stir that in. I fed this this morning. When I'm dealing with this much starter, I fed it double. You know, typically you're not going to be working with this large amount. I'm making this sourdough for the farmer's market, so I'm doing enough for 12 loaves. This is my pan I use and I use it, uh, I've never used it for anything but sourdough. This is a dish pan that you see in restaurants, but this has never had dirty dishes in it. The first thing you add is six cups of water. That was four cups. And here's two more cups. Is it cool water, warm water? It's, yeah, it's just medium temperature water, just like if you're doing uh, a yeast bread. And then it's four cups of sourdough starter. And I'll use this spoon. I use wooden spoons too. You're not supposed to use metal. Though I have mixed it up in a metal bowl and transferred it out. I don't know if it really makes a difference or not, but I try and follow the instructions. So. Oh, and I don't know if y'all noticed that this is a coffee filter and a ponytail holder to hold it down because you want it to be able to breathe. And you do have to be careful with your starter. You don't want to put it next to something like maybe kombucha or something else that, that, that has different yeast growing in it. All right, then I'm going to put four tablespoons of yeast. Now I'm going to put the recipe for three loaves down below. That was four, right? I mean three. I mean four. Yeah, I think it was four. Um, because I know most of you won't be wanting to make 12 loaves of bread. But, uh, so I'll put it on there. And I just stir that a little bit to incorporate. Um, and by the way, I did just put yeast in there. And yes, it is sourdough bread. I put yeast in there because tomorrow, when I break the uh, bread up into loaves, it's gonna rise in two to three hours, ready to bake. And uh, it takes so long to let it rise to bake without the yeast. So true sourdough bread, it wouldn't have yeast in it. I like, it gives it a quicker, higher rise when I use the yeast, and so that's why I do that. It is, you could just omit the, the yeast and it would just be sourdough. All right, and then it calls for um, four tablespoons of salt also. I gotta make sure I count these right. The yeast is off, no big deal. Salt is off, big deal. One. Two, three, four. And I'm sorry, I typically would have added my, my sugar first before my salt, but I was talking and forgot. This will have a cup of sugar in this. All I've done is quadrupled my recipe to make three loaves. That's what I got used to making was a three, and I've just made bigger and bigger loaves. All right, so I've got my sugar, my salt, my water, my starter, my yeast. Now I'm gonna add two cups of oil. I go over my recipe numerous times because I'm very scared I'll forget something. Hard to stir it 
stir in the oil. It'll start, it'll work in when I get my flour in. Now I've pre-measured six cups of flour just where it wouldn't take so long. Tommy's gonna go measure me another six cups of flour. When I'm making this, <clears throat> I always uh, do it. I put in six cups, then I stir. Put in six cups, then I stir. The last six cups, I'll do three cups and then add what I need from there. Um, this recipe will call for 24 cups, but it, I may not. Uh, I may not quite use it all. <clears throat> I find when it's not very humid outside, I really don't use quite as much flour. And I do use a spoon right now. I've got my hands washed. I always use very, very clean hands because I will go to using my hands in just a minute. I hope it's six. It's okay. With this, I'm really not going by how much the measured amount is, except I'm going by the feel of it. Again. One more time. And I'm going to have to get my hands in it. And when it gets to this point, you can start getting your hands in it. See how much quicker that is when you get your hands in it. You gotta remember, I don't do math. <laughs> it's fine. You need me to dump it? No, I don't want it all dumped in there. I'm gonna dump. This is my last batch of last uh, six cups, and so I may not need all of it. So I wouldn't want to dump it in there. I'll put three cups. I know I'll need at least three cups, and that'll be about half of it. And then I'll just go from there and see what I need. See, I'm kind of starting the kneading process. I'm starting to knead the flour into the bread. I don't know, have, can you see the KitchenAid mixer back there in the corner? I, uh, I actually have mixed up smaller batches of sourdough in it, and it does make it a lot easier. But I do enjoy being able to tell my customers that my bread is handmade, not made with a mixer or anything. So. And also one thing I always do, I always pull my hair up in a ponytail because I wouldn't Never want any of my customers to say to tell me that they found a hair in their bread. Daddy has some kind of secret to this because when I try it, I've got it all the way up to my elbow. <laughs> you and Corey both, but I still appreciate the help. Sometimes on Fridays, depending on which Friday it is, I do two, two uh, batches of this. And so I measure it all out and I have one of them in one bowl kneading too because this is a lot of work and it takes a little while and it helps out a lot if there's two people when you have two bowls going see it's getting harder and harder I don't know can you see can they see in there the flour I'm trying to get all this incorporated still see I still have at least three cups of flour left Then sometimes what I do is I break it apart because you see the moisture that's still not getting to that good with my kneading. And I know you can hear me huffing and puffing. So it's kinda, kinda hard. And see it's still real sticky in the inside so I just kinda separate it sometimes like this. And then I'll knead it all back together. Hopefully it'll pick up some of that flour. I think I'm gonna put some more of the flour on it. Yeah, it's really still sticky on the inside. And maybe this is a wrong thing to do. I've got this recipe from my Tommy's Aunt Dossie. She, uh, she's the one that taught me how to make bread. And uh, we actually sell her cookbook at the farmer's market. I guess we could sell it through the mail if people wanted it. But uh, she's got her bread recipe in here. I'm gonna put the bread recipe in the comments though or Tommy will. Tommy will. 
I always say that I'm going to do stuff like that, but Tommy's really the one that does it all. Anything well, on those I, things. Well, where I'm standing, it's a pretty fair trade. <laughs> and I'm just going to sprinkle some flour over this. I feel like it needs more in it. It's just not coming together. It's just not, maybe it won't take me as long to get it worked in like this. And I don't think it's going to take all of it this time. But I tell you one thing, it's not been humid here. It's just been burning up hot. And see how that's falling up, not sticking together? As you work it, it will all come together. And one trick to making pretty sourdough loaves, you see how it's floury on the outside. We're not going to leave it like that. And tomorrow when I make it into loaves, this will rise all night for 12, well, not quite 12 hours because it's 925 here right now. Um, and I'll come over here about 5 in the morning and it'll be filled up to the top of the pan. But um, anyway, I'll move all this extra flour out of here and I'll coat the bread with oil. And also when I make it into loaves tomorrow, and the rolls and everything I make it into, I will uh, have oil on my hands. So it'll be a nice, pretty, shiny loaf. It won't be, if I were to do it with flour, it would stay a dry loaf. And I just think it looks pretty with the oil. All right, you see the, the dough coming together? It's still, a, it's a tad sticky, not bad but it's really coming together nice now. Okay, now I'm gonna take this out. Set that there. And then I, I clean all this out of here. And every time you make bread, you feed your starter. I like this pan because it, it, it's really easy to clean. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna use this to feed my starter in a minute. And then what you do with this, remember I told you to have oil on it. See, this is a huge pan, so I am using a very generous amount of oil. I may have to pour some of this out. But I'm going to oil the entire pan. You didn't measure that, you just dumped it in there. I just dumped, yeah. And I dumped a lot. I usually have to come back and add more, but I may have to pour some of this out because it may be too much. But I want all to be covering the whole pan. That way your dough is not going to be stuck onto the pan real bad. Okay, now it's really not too, too much left in there. It's a little bit running, but that's okay. I'm going to take my dough. I'm going to push it down like that, and I'm going to turn it over. You see, I want oil on both sides. This will be a nice, pretty, risen up. Now I'm going to take saran wrap, and the, this is the last step tonight. I'm just getting my saran wrap on here as tight as I can. And I'm going to let her sit all night, and it'll be waiting for me in the morning. That's what I like about doing sourdough bread, that I can come over here in the morning and I can make 12 loaves of bread and nothing flat because my dough is already ready for me. Good morning. I'm going to show you what I do for the farmer's market every Thursday. This is my dough, and I have to make my bread. So, here we go. keep the dough from sticking. This is enough sourdough for 12 loaves. Everything I do with my sourdough is made by hand. This dough was made last night by me and my son. He helped me. I have another pan of it also and he helped me make it. Now I'm splitting this up because it's enough for 12 loaves 
And so each of these individual pieces is enough for three loaves. That's how I split up my bread to try and make it the same size. It always ends up a little bit different. See, this will be three loaves. One, two, three. Aunt Dossie, the one I got the red, my aunt that I got the recipe from, is the one that taught me how to shape my bread. She gave the recipe and everything in her book that I, we actually sell at the farmer's market too. But, uh, you know, there's a way to shape bread where it has the nice rounded top. And she's the one that showed me how to do that. Now I have my bread. This is enough for 12 loaves. I'm gonna move this back over here. And you can see how I do this. So, here we go. Always keep your hands nice and old. I take some dough and I'm curling it under. It's very simple. You just have to try a few times. And you see how it has that? That will go away as it rises up. And it's okay that it doesn't take up the whole pan. It will. Sometimes I get an air bubble and I keep working it to get that out because that makes for not so pretty of a loaf. And this will rise about three or four hours. And be ready to bake. All right, I'm gonna make my sourdough rolls now. Like I said, I make these for the farmer's market, so everything's done more in bulk. Each pan I put six rolls in, and of course I'm gonna put all on my counter. All on my hands. Now this is, represents six rolls, so I'm gonna break it in half, three and three, then one, two, three, one, two, three. That's pan rolls, but I get them all broke up first, where it's a lot quicker. Now when some of them look a little too small, add a little dough from these. See, I have this big one. I'll add a little bit to that one. Looks kind of small. All right, here we go. Roll, roll. I roll it around. And there it is. Four pans. Okay, now I'm going to make my breadsticks. Uh, actually, all the dough that I'm using is, is sourdough dough. And the breadsticks, uh, now I've already sprayed my pans. The breadsticks, I put four to a package. So I'm going to split my dough in fours. So I'm going to go ahead and get going. I'm making five pans. Now, what's making going to make this breadsticks and not just, or seasoned breadsticks, is that I'm going to, after they're done, I'm going to smear butter on them and put garlic powder, uh, Parmesan cheese, and parsley. And so they're just really, really good. With spaghetti or anything like that. I didn't have enough trays to do five pans. So I'm going to put two on the big tray right there. And as you can see, they don't look perfect, but they're going to rise, they, they will rise up nicely and really look good. There, there you have it. Breadsticks ready to bake. Well, 
waiting to rise and then bake. Okay, last but not least is my basil bread. This is enough dough to make three loaves of bread. And this is my regular sourdough bread. And I, got, I add basil to it. This is basil that I, that I grew in my garden. And I've read that it stays fresher if you don't crush it. And so I crush it as I need it, where it'll be as fresh as possible for my customers. And I only make three loaves of this, but I have customers that typically buy it. So, and I have my little stems in here, so I just pick them out, the harder pieces. And I don't know, maybe they would get soft. I don't know, but I don't want to take the chance. And I just knead in my basil. And of course, I've got all on my counter. I've oiled my sheet. This is kneading. This is what, how do you knead bread. I'll put a little bit more and I'll be done. Okay, now split this into three loaves. I'm going to show you a little trick on how I make this bread. I think it's so pretty. I like it to be a little bit different. All right, then I'm going to make three pieces. One, two, three on each one. And then I'm going to do it like I'm making breadsticks. But you know I'm not because this is basil bread. And I'm going to hook it together. Right there. And then I'm going to do a quick little braid. Did you catch that? It's kind of out of the, uh, the camera range. I'll do better with this one. I'm going to turn it this way. My hands won't be in the way. And I'm going to do I hooked it together here, and I'm going to do a quick braid. That's it, and I hook the ends together, pick it up gently, put it on my sheet. Like your braiding hair. Pinch it together, put it on your sheet. Now this is gonna have to rise, just like the rest of the stuff. About three hours, two or three hours, something like that. I use a little bit of uh, yeast in my sourdough, so it rises a little quicker than just sourdough. I just want to give you a quick shot of how pretty the basil bread looks all risen. It's fixing to go into a 350 degree oven and bake for 20 to 30 minutes. Basil bread is ready. Turned out nice. I just take and smear a little margarine on it when it look pretty. There you are. Beautiful basil bread. Okay, here is my finished sourdough. I've been baking. This was two baking, so I have a convection oven. And so I was able to cram all this bread in two bakings. So this is my sourdough ready for market. And then the four little loaves is just plain sourdough. And then I did 12 loaves of regular sourdough. Now the rolls are done, all that's left to do is to put a little margarine or butter on the tops. I love these pans. I mean, not the pans, the, uh, the cooler rack support. These are just little throwaway pans. I, I do like those. I use those for all my bacon for the farmer's market. But I love these racks, and this is why. It doesn't have to take up as much counter space. I believe they're originally for cookies, but I use them for bread. And there's three tiers. I can actually put something else on there if I'd like. So anyway, we'll put a link on the bottom to all the different ingredients and racks and stuff like that that I use down below. Please comment and let me know if you have any suggestions for me or what you do to make a little extra money on your at your house. Do you make sourdough bread? Let me know in the comments. I was talking to someone the other day and the way she fed her sourdough is a lot different than the way I feed mine. Let me know down in the comments what you may do different or any ideas or suggestions that you have for me. Have a great day. A viewer asked how to make how the a viewer asked how we make sourdough bread. Well, I'm fixing a cush.